the wall of death. There's multiple walls of deaths. Multiple walls of deaths? Well, anyway, it's an amusement park attraction. It's not a ride. Uh, and it's a big cylinder, and cars drive on the inside of the cylinder. I mean, it's kind of cool. Motorcycles do it too. It's easier with the motorcycle, but they do it with cars. And I'm going to use a car just because physics-wise, it's a little bit easier with the car. So here we have a car driving on the wall of death. You see it's going around this way. It's coming out of the page at this point. I gave it a mass of 1,500 kilograms. The, these walls of death is have uh, a radius between 3.5 and 5 meters. Okay, um, But let's just use 5. And I'm going to say there's a coefficient of friction between the tires and the wall of 0.4. I just picked a value. But if that's the case, then how fast would you have to drive in order to not fall on the wall of death? Which probably wouldn't kill you, but you got to have dramatic name, right? Otherwise, people aren't going to pay to see it. Okay, so here's my car. Let's go ahead and draw a, a forest diagram for that. So I'm gonna put my dot right there. And this is kind of tough, right? Because what forces are acting on the car? We can go back to our forest diagram from before and use the same idea. What long range forces are acting the car? What's acting the car that doesn't have to touch? The only one that we've seen of that so far is gravity. So we have the gravitational force and it pulls down M G. What else pulls on the car or touches the car? Well, the wall touches the car. So walls exert normal forces that are perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, at that instant, the surface is vertical. So the wall is going to push this way. So the normal force is this way. And that's like weird, right? Normal force is not always equal to mg. It's definitely not equal to mg here. But there has to be some other force, right? Because if those are my only two forces, it's going to accelerate in the direction of the net force, which is this way. And it would move down. And I don't want that. So there has to be an upwards pushing force. And that force is also from the wall, the only thing that's contacting the car. So there would be a frictional force pushing up. And the static friction, I'm going to call it, I usually call it FF. Remember, the static friction force is a force parallel to the surface, and it pushes in a direction to prevent things from slipping, right? So if I don't want my tires to slip this way, then there would have to be an upwards pushing frictional force. So that's my diagram. That's it. I have the long range force gravity. I have the, the contact force in the wall, the contact force in the wall. But it's not going to add up to zero. I can't have an F net equal to zero in this case, which is true. I don't want an F net equal to zero because the car is moving in a circle, so it will have an acceleration. Let's call this the X direction and this the Y direction. Again, we want to pick our X and Y directions such that the, the acceleration is in one of those directions. In this case, if it's it, Moving in a circle, it's going to accelerate towards the center of the circle, which is over here in the x direction. So that's good. Okay, so now I can write my uh, force equations. F net in the x direction. Let's do x first. I don't know why I'm doing x first. It's just going to be n. And that's going to be equal to m times the acceleration. If that's in the positive x direction, right? And that's going to be mass times acceleration, which is a circular acceleration. So I can write that as v squared over r. Remember, I'll put it over here, ac is v squared over r. That's my uh, magnitude of the acceleration for an object moving in a circle. Okay, can I solve this for v? Well, no, I can't because I don't know n. n is a force of constraint. I don't know what it is. Well, let, you know, as we do, if you don't know, you get another equation. So we have another equation. I can say F net in the Y direction is going to be equal to the friction force FF minus MG, and that's zero. I, I want to remind you that once you get into the Y and X components of forces, these are scalar values, scalar value. So that's why this is negative, right? Because it's in the negative Y direction. Just want to point that out. Well, I still can't solve for this. 
I can't solve for n. But I can solve for the frictional force. F friction is going to be equal to mg. And that is going to be equal to, at the slowest speed, I'm going to have to have the maximum friction. So I can set that equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Because remember over here, I'll put it right here, the frictional force is equal, less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. That's our model for friction. So I can use it right here and set it equal to because I want to go as slow as possible. So I need the maximum friction. Now I can solve for n. n equals mg over the coefficient of static friction. Now I can put that in up here. So I get mg divided by the coefficient of static friction is equal to m v squared over r. Now that I can solve, right? First of all, notice that the mass cancels, so I didn't even need this mass. You could put it in if you want to, but it's just going to cancel. Which is good, because then all my cars that are driving around together, if they have the same coefficient of static friction, they're going to go the same speed. Multiply both sides by r, I get v squared equals g r over the coefficient of static friction, and then v is going to be the square root of g r over the coefficient of static friction. Let's just check, right? It's important to kind of check and see if this is even legitimate. Uh, number one, what are the units? Well, this has, g has units of meters per second squared. I multiply by meters, I get meters squared per second squared. I divide by the coefficient, which is just a number. It doesn't have units. So I get meters squared per second squared, square root meters per second. Good. Okay, what if I make if I increase my coefficient of friction, should I go faster or slower? Well, this says slower, and that makes sense, right? The slower I go, the less this normal force pushes, and the less friction will I have. But if I increase the coefficient of friction, then this model says I get more friction. What if I moved this to the moon, wall of death on the moon? On the moon, I have a lower gravitational field. So I wouldn't have to go as fast. And in fact, if there's no gravity, I don't have to go fast at all. I could die and I even need friction. Okay. I'll point out that this problem came up recently. Well, let's, let's, let's solve it. Let's put in our value. So I'm going to put in uh, the square root of 9.8 times 5 over 0 0.4. And I get a velocity of calculator drop 9.85 times 0.4 divided by square root 11.06 which is not super fast um, I mean it's normal speeds right it's faster than you would be able to run but it's like what's that converted to double that's like 20 miles per hour or something I don't know it doesn't really matter but what I want to talk about is the wall of death. Because there was a recent proposal, which is pretty awesome, and it says, uh, what if you had a base on the moon and you want people to exercise? Well, the gravitational field on the moon is very low, so you don't have a lot of impact. You can't, you can't have the same kind of uh, bone development that you would on Earth because your, your, your body's not being squished. So the idea was to get people and to have them run on the wall of death, on the moon, right? So if, once you start getting up to speed, you can increase your normal force pushing this way, which would be the same as a weight. So you can make, you can exercise in a mostly, it wouldn't be actually be perfectly vertical because there is a downward gravitational force um, on that thing. I do want to say one other thing about the wall of death, because I, I want to come back to this problem when we get to uh, rigid body equilibrium and, and torque. If you have a car, it's important that the contact point on the bottom wheel is lower than the center of mass of the car. Because uh, if you have a, bike, a motorcycle or bike, you actually have to lean up a little bit in order to not fall over. So it's a, it's a problem of torque and stuff like that that kind of makes it interesting. But that's the wall of death. If you want to build your own, don't. Because if you want an extra problem, you can calculate the value of that normal force. And that does depend on the mass. What's going to happen is if you, if you don't build your wall of death correctly, that force is going to be large. And if the wall is pushing on the car, the car pushes on the wall with the same force. And it can actually break the wall. And then that is bad. Okay. 
So don't do that. You really have to be careful about how you build your wall of death. Um, but there you go, wall of death.